the region of Ural Mountains in Russia is still largely unexplored. The weather is cold. It is home to a number of nature reserves which are not at all populated. There are no roads, no infrastructure of any kind. So it's not a surprise that only in recent times photos and footage of the megaliths of Ural are now available to us. And in this video, we will present a very short overview of some of the megaliths. It all began with some tourists who by chance found some blocks with uh, very right angles, having a badly beaten shape, just out in the wild where uh, no civilization has ever been, according to the official Russian history. Not only do a large number of these blocks have many right angles, but moreover they are perfectly polished. Only the surface that has been exposed to the erosion on the outside has been overgrown with this uh, green moss. And the surfaces that were inside, that were uh, somewhat protected from the weather erosion, those are so smooth that the green moss didn't have anywhere to stick. It could not cover those areas. Besides stones with numerous right angles, a number of stones have been found with these uh, cuttings, uh, machine-like cuttings, which suggests the use of uh, very advanced technology. Again, this is usually some hundred kilometers from any roads or known human activity. And with cutting so deep, there is no question of any scientist going there in recent times and taking any sample, for example, because in our current civilization, we do not have the portable tools that could leave these types of marks. For example, the ones that you see on uh, this particular photo. If these cuttings resemble anything, that would be uh, other historic masonry work. For a comparison, you can see some photos of ancient stone cuttings found in Cambodia and some found in Russia. They are quite similar, actually. Not only the type of tools that left these marks are similar. On the left-hand side, you see a fragment of a Cambodian archaeological site. And on the right-hand side, you see some fragments of stones found in Ural. At various locations in the Ural Mountains, there are some kind of uh, stone circles, which nobody has researched until now. After all, it is about a month's trek of very difficult walking through the mountains to reach those areas. There are no roads around there. Also, a number of locations with very regular shaped piles of rubble can be found. Again, sorry for repeating, but this is usually a hundred or even a few hundred kilometers from any road or any known human activity whatsoever. Really out there, completely in the wild, very cold area. Hardly even the local tribes would venture in these particular regions. And these piles of rubble consist actually of very regular shaped stones that really must have come out of some sort of uh, machine work. And the official explanation given to the public by the scientists is that the glaciers brought this uh, pile of stuff from somewhere. However, this does seem quite ridiculous as glaciers don't pile up in uh, regular shapes in selected areas. They, uh, they tend to scatter. Also, glaciers are not really known to have the ability to select stones of uniform size and arrange them in these, uh, in these geometric patterns. And also, some people suggest that there could be some sort of um, buildings underneath. And by the way, what you see in this photo uh, is not grass. These are trees. So these are really large hills, a minimum of uh, 20 to 30 meters in height, and uh, some of them even higher. So uh, what what is this? Is it a leftover product of uh, mining activity done or done by a civilization unknown to us? Or, or are there really buildings buried underneath? Yeah, there remain just too many unanswered questions. And another photo again from the Ural Mountains. Besides the beautiful rocks in the front, if you look at the mountain range in the back, uh, one of the peaks is actually black. 
and it has quite a regular shape. Actually, this is a black pyramid made out of quartzite. A number of researchers have attempted to uh, get nearby. However, many of them tell these stories of meeting uh, strange entities, even in broad daylight, some of them. And uh, these, these entities, they did not advise them to get near to the uh, pyramid, and that is why it is still largely uh, unexplored. And here are a few more photos of this uh, uh, black pyramid made of um, quartzite. Uh, this material itself has very peculiar qualities. It has a, it has a tendency to store uh, static electricity and release it into the atmosphere only when certain conditions are present. You can see some kind of entry at the foot of this uh, pyramid. It is said to be some kind of mine, maybe. However, Nikolai Sabotin, the gentleman you see lecturing on the subject, well, he did his best to find any information on any mining activity. However, nothing like this has been recorded anywhere in the region nearby for uh, the last couple hundred years. So uh, that entry inside is also a mystery. And now we are off to the next destination. Uh, this megalith is a large wall. It is the height of a 12-story building, and uh, its sights point directly to the north and the south. The location is called Chortovoy Gordishti. <laughs> At least I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And it's actually only six kilometers away from a village, so it is accessible. On this photo, you see the blocks that make up the foundation of the building. And it is a building. It's got uh, four lines of blocks along its base. And all around, you can see the building blocks that were used in the construction. They're very well shaped, having a parallel pivot kind of form. So there is no question of some strange uh, geological formation. This is a wall, uh, a wall made of regular shaped stone blocks. Around the wall, you can see some things similar to this one here on the photo. Megalithic structures looking like entries to some sort of underground tunnels or something like that, which still have not been excavated to this day. And we are off to the next archaeological site. This one is called Popov Ostrov in the same district of Russia. Uh, Popov Island is the translation of the name. And one can see a number of stones that bear signs of uh, human activity. For example, you can see here a row of steps, a uh, staircase. Obviously, this is not a natural phenomenon. However, nobody knows uh, of any civilization that has ever lived around here. And please pay attention to the picture on the bottom right with the, uh, the round holes there. Uh, very similar types of holes have been observed on megalithic sites all over the world. And all of these sites are badly damaged as if by a, a war or some kind of um, military means. By uh, And on to our next destination, an archaeological site that has been discovered uh, actually in the autumn of uh, 2013. The name is Gorne Ashoria. It means Upper Sharia. And uh, what is very remarkable about this site is that uh, until now, Baalbek was famous for having the biggest megalithic stones uh, known to us. Actually, now the situation has changed because the stones in Gorne Ashoria would be uh, roughly ten times bigger. By visiting there, one really gets the feeling that these stones were soft when placed next to each other. And again, uh, very similar to the previous site, there are these tunnels that, um, well, nobody knows where they lead, but they are uh, around the structure. And another parallel with the Peruvian megaliths are locations with uh, molten stone. The stone appears as if melted. However, nobody can explain exactly uh, how that happened. And by the way, since we're talking about molten rocks, let's go to Sodom and Gomorrah, the legendary cities. That's what you see here on the screen. Let's see if we can find some parallels because this is a site where there are molten stones as well. At some locations, the stone is melted down to 50 centimeters deep. You can just imagine what kind of temperature there must have been to melt these stones so severely. Those of you who are familiar with the Bible probably remember what the God did to Saddam and Gomorrah. Well, he destroyed them by throwing fire and sulfur from the skies. 
This is what the Bible says. And a modern excavation done some 10 years ago uh, really did find balls of sulfur that have literally bombed the city from above. Now, the interesting thing about these sulfur balls, you can see them on the photo, they're kind of white, and they leave these kind of uh, circular holes, these uh, damaged areas in the stone. Well, the purity of this sulfur is above 90%. While in nature, sulfur is found to have a purity of only 30 to 40 percent. So obviously, uh, this sulfur that rained from these skies was a technologically produced uh, substance. The entire area of Sodom and Gomorrah is just full of these white balls. And this is a very important artifact, actually, of an uh, ancient weapon that was used. And by the way, uh, the round formations from Ural, if you remember them on the screen, it's more likely that they had a similar origin. Although the official sign says that every stone that has a round shape carved into the stone is uh, some sort of sacrificial vessel for holding the blood of the victims. However, there is no factual evidence to support such statements. So despite them telling us this, we see in this case uh, destroyed structures. We see similar signs of damage and uh, we can see these parallels with sites all around the world. Uh, South America, Saddam and Gomorrah, and uh, Iraq. So the version of the story that these are actual traces of uh, ancient weapons has more factual support. And if you look at the photos on the screen, you will see locations from all around the Earth, and you can see they have similar damages. Some kind of round objects hitting the stone and uh, melting it. So who knows, we could uh, definitely make a hypothesis here that these were some of the weapons by which the destruction of a number of megalithic sites occurred. And another interesting location in Ural. Uh, what is this? Is this a natural formation? Or maybe when the rocks were still soft, uh, one of the giants, which the legends tell us of, uh, stepped there maybe? We don't know. Another one of the interesting locations in the Ural Mountains is Divea Peshara. Although this cave is not yet studied completely, the number of witnesses reporting uh, dwarf-like creatures around it is really overwhelming. And the witnesses who report these sightings are actually really reliable and honest people. And it is uh, really quite a few of them. One thing that is always greatly puzzling is the fact that being a witness in court, if many reliable sources are said to have seen something that is accepted as the truth. And yet, in other cases, when many reliable sources swear to have seen something, something that does not fit with the official history or the uh, official picture of reality, that the mass media is implanting in us, then everybody just seems to believe the mass media that this is all fantasy. So this sort of double standard of most people is really rather puzzling. Now here's another artifact from this region which is kept in a small local museum. This is a human tooth, and the test results show that it is human, so there are no doubts about that. However, the strange thing about it is the size of it. It is 1.5 times the size of normal human teeth. So the ancient legends about the giants, and there are many of them in this region, could actually be uh, the truth. Another small mystery of the Ura Mountains. Uh, this is an ancient sign. It usually means something like the female or the beginning. It is a sign of a woman, and it actually sticks out of the stone. And it is not even stone. It looks like stone, but it is actually some kind of uh, metal. And uh, when Nikolai Sabotin tried to take a small sample of the material, uh, he actually broke his instruments. And this is a map of some of these sites mentioned. So you can see their uh, proximity to each other. And by the way, uh, somewhere in this area years ago, Somebody tried to build a, uh, a military base or something. And for whatever reason, they <coughs> selected a place, and uh, the local shamans there told them that they, uh, they could not build in this region. That uh, this is a sacred place. But of course, uh, you know, nobody ever listens to them. So they built their uh, base or uh, what have you. But it was a complete disaster. 
every month they had to make repairs on their uh, their electronics and electrical wiring and this was because uh, the entire area was completely electrically charged or uh, something like that it was almost as if they were sitting on some kind of a uh, huge power generator everything they tried to touch was just charged with uh, static electricity it was uh, just sticking to their hands all of their equipment was just shorting out and shutting down and actually in a few months they were forced to uh, to leave the place it was simply not possible to do anything there uh, because of the static electricity that was just uh, everywhere and another th interesting thing in Ural is a number of leveled platforms they look as if someone has cut the top of the mountain and uh, leveled it into a flat platform and these are the size of let's say uh, four football fields and the platforms are not only perfectly leveled but they are also completely cleaned of any larger medium sized stones and unfortunately the photos of these platforms are not very clear but uh, still if you pay attention you will notice something and here's our next destination it is a uh, a gigantic wall. And it is called Arahalski Shetan in the districts of Chelyabinsk, again in the region of Ural. But here we have ongoing archaeological work. The style you can see is very similar to other locations shown. And this wall is 80 meters high, which is which is something like a 30-story building. And in some places, if you stand at the top and look forth from this wall, the view is uh, simply amazing. It's it's completely breathtaking. That's how people describe it. Well, thank it. you for listening. We hope this has been interesting for you. You can find some other unique videos on the New Earth channel. And by the way, uh, most of the information in this video has been taken from a researcher named Nikolai Sabotin. The first link you will find in the video description is a link to his lecture. And what we present here is hardly a fourth of the information he gave. So those who are interested really can learn much more from the Russian original. Thank you.